God is holy, and you must be too. The trouble we see in the world today and in the church are nothing more than a prelude to God's plan for a new era of peace in the world. All inhabitants in this era will be believers in Christ that are living in the divine will with a divine sanctity as planned by God when he created man. The Abrahamic Covenant with God in Holiness After the liberation of the Israelites from slavery in Egypt, the Lord said to Moses, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourself therefore and be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11.44 This ordinance of holiness is very important for the Lord. He repeats it three more times. For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God. Thus you shall be holy, for I am holy. Leviticus 11.45 Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, and say to them, You shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Leviticus 19.2 Thus you are to be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy. Leviticus 20.26 in the New Testament, the importance of holiness is repeated, quote, As obedient children, be yourselves holy in all your activity. After the model of the Holy One who calls us, since the scripture says, quote, Be holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1.16 The followers of Lord Jesus Christ are called to holiness. Quote, Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all the spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Thus he chose us in Christ before the world was made, to be holy and faultless before him in love, marking us out for himself beforehand to be adopted sons through Jesus Christ. Such was his purpose and good pleasure, to the praise of the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the Beloved, in whom through his blood we gain our freedom, the forgiveness of our sins. Such is the richness of the grace which he has showered on us in all wisdom and insight. He has let us know the mystery of his purpose according to his good pleasure, which he determined beforehand in Christ. For him to act upon when the times had run their course, that he would bring everything together under Christ as head, everything in the heavens, and everything on earth. Ephesians 1, 3-10 When Christ has revealed his purpose, as the Apostle Paul says, quote, When the time has run their course, that he would bring everything together under Christ as head, everything in the heavens, and everything on earth. This is a clear message for those who want to see, a biblical truth of the coming of our Lord, not at the end of the world, the parousia, but an intermediate coming of the Lord to reign on earth in spirit in the kingdom of the divine will, with, a mother, with mother Mary as queen and populated with those living in the divine will. The following is an extract of the revelation of Jesus to the servant of God, Luisa Picarreta, volume 17, June 1924. How the divine will is origin, means, and end to holiness. Quote, my daughter, living in my will is very different from the other sanctities. And this is why, up until now, the way and the true teachings of living in it cannot be found. One can say that the other sanctities are the shadows of my divine life, while my will is the source of the divine life. My daughter, my will is everything, and contains everything, and then, it is the origin, the means, and the end of man. This is why in creating him I did not give him a law, nor did I institute sacraments, but I gave man my will alone, because it was sufficient for him, being in the origin of it. To find all the means to reach, not a low sanctity, but the height of the divine sanctity, and therefore find himself at the harbor of his end. This means that man was to need nothing but my will in which he was to find everything, in a surprising, admirable, and easy way, to become holy and happy in time and eternity. 
And if I gave him a law after centuries and centuries of creation, it was because man had lost his origin, and so he had lost means and end. Therefore, the law was not origin, but means. But in seeing that with all of my law, man was getting lost, in coming upon earth, I instituted the sacraments as stronger and more powerful means to save him. But how many abuses, how many profanations, how many use the law and the very sacraments more to sin and to fall into hell? While with my will alone, which is origin, means, and end, the soul places herself in safety. She rises to divine sanctity. She reaches in a complete manner the purpose for which she was created, and there is no shadow of danger that she might offend me. Therefore, the safest way is only my will. The very sacraments, if they are not received in order with my will, can serve as means of condemnation and of ruin. This is why I inculcated my will so much, because being the soul in her origin, the means will be favorable to her, and she will receive the fruits which they contain. On the other hand, without it, the sacraments themselves may be a poison to her, leading her to eternal death. This last sentence sounds horrible to think that a sacrament can lead to hell, but we are not the judge. God is. Certain, certain conditions like receiving Eucharistic communion knowingly and purposely in a state of mortal sin is a sacrilege, a grave sin. We read in the, in the Blessed Mother's message in the alleged apparitions of Garabandal. The Blessed Mother's two main messages of Garabandal. Our Lady's first message, October 18, 1961, quote, we must make many sacrifices, perform much penance, and visit the Blessed Sacrament frequently. But first, we must lead good lives. If we do not, a chastisement will befall us. The cup is already filling up, and if we do not change, a very great chastisement will come upon us. Second message, June 18, 1965. Quote, As my message of October the 18th has not been complied with, and has not been made known to the world, I'm advising you that this is the last one. Before, the cup was filling up. Now, it is flowing over. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are on the road to perdition, and are taking many souls with them. Less and less importance is being given to the Eucharist. You should turn the wrath of God away from yourselves by your efforts. If you ask his forgiveness with sincere hearts, he will pardon you. I, your mother, through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, ask you to amend your lives. You are now receiving the last warnings. I love you very much and do not want your condemnation. Pray to us with sincerity and we will grant your request. You should make more sacrifices. Think about the passion of Jesus. Close quote. The world is upside down, and there are opinions and teachings of certain bishops and priests that could lead to a schism in the Catholic Church. But we know that God is in control, and He has promised to come and reign among us. May this be happening soon. God bless you, and let your kingdom come and your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Fiat.